Today we're going to be talking about refining here in Albion Online and refining is the act of taking raw materials such as stone, fiber, hide, ore, or wood that you collected in the open world or bought on the market and turning it into usable materials for crafting and making buildings. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a basic overview of how to get started with refining. I'm going to walk you through some of the refining steps that I took on my account and some of the things that I noticed and I'm going to teach you to make your life easier when you start with refining. Now, the first thing we are going to talk about is if you're going to buy on the market or gather it yourself. So if you open up your city map, I am in Limhurst making this video. We are gonna to go to uh, Uwood. And as you can see here, these are the materials that are gonna be in these zones. So if you are gonna be gathering it yourself, this place has tier three through tier five wood, and it has stone and the same for hide. It's tier three through tier five. Now the lower level zones, if you're looking for lower level mats would be tier two to tier four. These would be the blue zones. And then if you want even, if you want to keep it just a tier two and three, you can go to a tier three zone. And then above that, we have the tier six zones. So they go up to tier six. Higher level mats than that. See how it stops at tier six, even though this is a tier seven. You have to go to the black zone or the Avalonian roads to try to get those tier seven and tier eight mats. So that is how you read the map to figure out what resources are in what regions. So we can click like on a desert map. And now we have or fiber and hide. So back to the map, now we're going to talk about the city. So in the actual city, there are buildings used for refining. And the thing with these is they have bonuses. So if we go and click on a random building, let me just go to one that's right next to me. So if we go to, we're actually gonna go to this weaver right here. Let's go to the elder weaver and we click on it. We're going to have a Resource return rate of 36.7%. So that is just for that building. But if we do go and click on another one, let's go to, uh, let's go to, let's go to the cook right here and see what their resource return rate is. So we have a 15.2% return rate for the cook. So it is a lower return rate and that is because of the cities. So when it comes to the cities and the bonuses that they have, I'm going to zoom out here in the Royal Continent. There are the five major cities and then there's Caerleon, but we're not gonna be talking about that because it's not part of this refining crafting circle. So each city has its own bonus. And by bonus, I mean, if we click on Limhurst and we press this drop down bar, Limhurst has a 40% fiber bonus for refining. So repeated refining this resource type here will grant a total production output of at least 158%. Now fiber is the only production bonus for Limhurst. And we can click on every single city to see their own bonuses. So if we go to Martlock, this one has a 40% hide bonus. And just to go down the list for you guys, I can write them all out. We have Fort Sterling has a 40% for refining wood. Thetford has a 40% for ore. Martlock has a 40% for hide. Bridgewatch has a 40% for stone. And Limhurst has a 40% for fiber. So this is something to keep in mind if you do want to be refining a certain material. Let's say you went to Thetford and you collected a ton of hide in this area, and then you thought about refining it in Thetford, but then you realize that Thetford has a 40% ore bonus. You can actually collect in here and then bring it down, run through the yellow zones, if you're not trying to go into any of the PVP zones, down to Martlock, and you can take it here where you get a hide bonus. And the point of this bonus is when you go to craft, you get more resource returns. So if you put 50 in and you get a 50% return rate, the 50 raw materials are gonna get eaten and you're gonna get spat out 25 extra raw material that you can use to then refine more of the material you're trying to make. And I'm gonna show you guys an example at the end of this video if it is getting confusing, but this is something to keep in mind that all of these cities have the refining bonus, separate refining bonuses. Going on, the next thing that we're going to talk about is the actual buildings in the city. So we have the Elder's Weaver, we have the Tanner, we have the Cook. So these are all the different refining buildings like the Lumber Mill. And something to keep in mind is what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be working on an elder weaver. So we see plenty of different buildings and we're, you know, these are all player owned. So the players do control the prices. So this is the part where you need to be very careful where you refine. Do not, do not just come out of the bank or market if you just bought materials and go to the first shop you see, because you might be just completely screwing yourself by doing that because some of these buildings have extremely high prices because they're trying to essentially scam players and steal your silver and you're not even gonna notice. So for example, if we go over to, let's say this Elder Weaver over here, it's custom and the owner is Cole. 
It has a usage fee per 100 nutrition consumed of 9999. So they have actually maxed out price that they can charge their users of the station. And this is one this is an example of a station you would not want to go to. So to find out what Elder Reaver we want to go to and I've actually brought some fiber with me that I gathered. Well, I actually bought it, but let's just say for this the purpose of this video, let's say I went out and gathered all this and I'm taking it to refine at this moment. I also brought a bag because this bag helps lower the weight of any tier 7 fiber or lower. It'll also help reduce the weight of anything that's refined in fiber. So all the cloth that I'm going to get, this will reduce the weight of it. I know it says tier 7 fiber or lower, but it will affect the refined materials as well. And then I have a bag and pork pies in case I get overweight. Pork pies will increase my max load by 30% if I need to eat it. But I'm only at 70% right now. Depending on how many resource return rates we get, we might be overweight. But this is what we're going to be working with. So let's say that we want to refine this fiber. We are going to open up the map and we're going to click on the nearest Elder's Weaver station. And now it's going to highlight every Elder Weaver station that we can use to refine our materials. So we're going to mouse over them. This one has a 350 usage and the other one below it that says 300 silver is an associate's fee. Don't worry about that unless you're involved with the building at all. The owner would have to give you associate privileges, but we're not worried about that because we don't we're not messing with any of the buildings. So only look at the top number. This one has 500. Top number is 349. We are finding a little bit lower ones. We have 350, 350, 300. We have 250 right here. And then 295. We have another 250 right here. So we can use so far what it's looking like is 250 is the cheapest price. Yeah, 250 is the cheapest price. So we can use this station or where was it? It was down here, right? We can use this station. So I'll probably just move over to this station and we're just gonna, we're over here. So we're just gonna run our way down this path to the station. So I'm gonna run over there right now and then I'll meet you guys over there and we can start the refining process. Okay, we are here at the Elder Weaver. And this is, again, I'm going to double check just to make sure I'm not getting ripped off. This is the 250 silver per 100 nutrition consumed. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this interface. Now, if we open up our destiny board, we have following the green line to the trainee craftsman. And then we're going to follow this left green line down. We have the journeyman refiner. Now to get these unlocked, you want to get these unlocked to be able to do tier four. You're going to need to refine tier two resources, tier three raw, all raw resources and make them into tier three. And then once you make enough tier three, you will unlock tier four and you can use learning points to unlock tier four. And it's going to go all the way down as you craft each, as you craft more tier four, tier five will become unlocked. And then you can get it unlocked and you can use it that way. And I'm going to show you that right now, how we're going to do this in this order. So we're going to open up the interface. And right here we have first is our simple cloth. This is the first one we're going to need to make because we need to make the cloth to be able to make the neat cloth, which is the tier three. So I have a full stack here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this interface. It's going to be free for any tier two. And then once we get to tier three, it's going to start costing. But this tier two is cheap. You can use your focus to get a higher resource return rate but I don't recommend doing it on these lower tiers. I would save it for the 4.3, the exceptional, and the 5.3. So when you're crafting those, you can get a higher return rate for those so you can get a lot more money back rather than using it on the cheaper refining resources. And then when you get up here, these are like, when you get up to the tier sevens and tier eights, this is where you wanna use your focus to get better returns because you're gonna get a lot more profit. A lot of these lower level Refining is not worth using your focus to get returns on because you're not really getting money back in the first place. So we're going to craft this full stack. Okay, so that full stack is done. And as you can see, I, I did fast forward because it does take a while to get through the crafting process. If you do want to bring like a Kraken salad or potato salad, which is a food that you can eat to increase your crafting speed, you can do that. But here you can see that we have 366 left, but we have a full stack of simple cloth. That's because of the resource return rates. Sure. Now I'm gonna keep spamming the crafting button until we get through everything that we need to refine. But as you can see, we're getting more value for the materials that we ended up bringing because I'm I'm gonna end up more with more than a, just one stack. I almost, I have a stack and a half over there now because of the resource return rate. 
Let me get rid of this just so it's not confusing. So this is where the process gets for the next tier. So we have neat cloth. We have simple cloth. We're going to need the simple cloth we just refined. And then we're going to need a tier three raw material. Now, there is something going on with the station at the moment. As you can see, it's not letting me use everything that we need to use. And that's because up here in the top corner, if we mouse over the crafting capacity, it appears that a lot of people have been using this crafting station. And when the crafting capacity gets low, it means you can't make a lot of resources at one time. That's why it's kind of limiting it, limiting us to what we can craft. As well as the durability is something to pay attention to. If the food supply runs out, no one can craft at the station. The owner of the station has to bring food. And then you won't be able to craft if the durability goes all the way down. But crafting capacity is something you need to pay attention to. Because now we can only craft like 79 at a time. So what we're going to do instead of standing here, just waiting for that to go up, we're going to move to the nearest station that has more availability. And I'm thinking that we can go check that other 250 coin station. I'm going to fast forward real quick and run over there. Okay, so I'm here at the station and it appears that this one has low crafting capacity as well. So I think we'll just we'll just take one for the team here. We're going to move over to another crafting station that is around 350. I'm not going to run all the way over here just for the purpose of the, I'm just going to for the purpose of the video, we're going to stay right here and craft at one of these stations that have a higher capacity. So this one has 96% crafting capacity left. So we're just going to craft here. We'll have to pay a little bit, like a tiny bit more, but it's not that much. So we're going to throw the neat cloth in now. And as you can see, we need the flax, which is our tier three raw resource. And then we need our tier two refined resource. Of we're going to craft this first. And we're working with a 36.7 resource return rate. So we're going to keep rolling this through until we get all of this refined. Okay, so from here, we're going to be working our way up to tier four refining now. Now, you may be tempted to do this one first, but we did bring some. We have some rare hemp, uncommon hemp, and exceptional hemp. And for these, when you scroll down, if we wanted to do exceptional fine cloth, for example, we need tier three refined resources just flat so if we were to do this one first and then move our way up like this we might accidentally get to this exceptional fine cloth and run out of our tier 3 resource that we need for this as well as on the 4.3 i am going to roll some focus to help me get some more resource return rates on it 53.9 percent as well as when i get to do the 5.3 i'm going to roll some focus into it so you can see that the focus does increase our resource return rate and we're going to do some exceptional fine cloth first so we're going to roll this through gives us about 13 back we're going to roll some more and there we go now we have the tier 4 fine cloth we're going to put that down there now we have the rare fine cloth that we have to do next so we're going to roll this through using our same resources but this time we're using the exceptional okay now we do the uncommon Okay, now moving on to... I'm going to sort these real quick. Now we have... We have a one of each left, and then we have nine stacks of the fine. So we actually didn't do our fine cloth yet, so let's roll that through. Now that we have all those done, we're going to move up to our tier five refining. So let's scroll down here. We're going to do exceptional cloth first, the ornate cloth, and we are going to roll some focus to get this one done as well, of course. just so we get some extra return rates on these. Sure. going to eat up all my focus, but that's all right. Let me. Okay, and there we go. We have 34 of these now. We're 604k. I'm not going to roll any focus for these next ones. That we're going to roll them through, but here, here's something to pay attention to I didn't mention, but we do need exceptional fine cloth, and then we need exceptional sky flower to be able to make this 5.3 or knit cloth. That is something to pay attention to. You can't just use flat material for it. And that is the same as you're going up. You're going to need the next one to get all the way up to, if you were to make 8.3, you would need 7.3, to then you would need 6.3. It goes all the way up once you get to the tier 5. So now we're going to finish crafting up the rare cloth. So let's just throw this in. 36%, 36.7 turn rate. Okay, and then we'll do the 
And we do ornate cloth, so we're going to do 333 of that. Of we're going to throw that in. We're going to keep rolling this through to get everything crafted up. This is how your typical refining run would go. If you were to gather everything in the open world and then come here to refine it, you would go down the list in the order that I'm teaching you. Doing the exceptional, rare, and uncommon first. For tier 4, 5, and even 6 if you are doing some tier 6 gathering. This is all of the refined materials that we got from this. So we do have a bunch of leftovers. A bunch of leftovers that weren't able to be crafted. But other than that, we got all of these different types of cloth that we have crafted. And we have we have all this different type of cloth that we have refined. And this can all be used for crafting. So on another note, we're going to go back to the bank and drop all this off. But really at the end of the day, you can either gather and refine. And then you could sell the refined materials for the crafters. Or if you're planning on doing like you want to make your own armors or you're thinking about starting up crafting as a profit, you are going to want to start crafting in the future and it's going to take a lot of materials to get your levels up. So what you want to do is you want to save all of these refined material to use for crafting. So I actually have a refined material tab and I'm going to throw everything in there like this. And I mean, I'll throw this in here too, just because I'm going to have to use it at some point. But this is where I have all my refined cloth, so when I start doing some crafting, like making some cloth armors, I've just been saving it all up. But this is something you can do as well, if you are trying to get crafting in the future. That's going to be it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something about refining. It was very confusing for me at first, and I went through the process, kind of built up some of these ideas, and I wanted to bring them to you to make your life easier here in Albion Online. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video, and I'll see you in Albion Online.